And this video is part of a long playlist taking you through all the skills you need for your A-level chemistry. In this video, we're looking specifically at percentage yields and taking you through the skills for this. Now, not only are we going to take you through the calculations, we're going to explain it to you. And then if you want to practice this skill as part of a long question, as part of the exam style question, they are all later on in the playlist for you. So next up, we're going to have a look at these questions on percentage yield. And before we do that, let's just recap the topic and remind ourselves of the equation we'll need to use. So the formula that we need to use states that percentage yield is equal to the actual yield over the theoretical yield. And then we times it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. Now, this is very important and we will see that we're generally given the actual yield in the question. And then the theoretical yield is something we need to work out using molar ratios in the formula. Now we can either use mass for each of these or moles for each of these. Throughout my workings for the next few questions, I'll probably use moles, but either works just as well. So let us have a look here, starting with question one, at how we actually do these in practice. So let's get started here with question one. So the balanced equation here is very, very important because it's that balanced equation that will enable us to see molar ratios of the substances. So in this case, in this question, we are told about iodine, we're told a mass of iodine, and we're asked about copper iodide. Those are the two substances that we're actually given numbers or asked numbers about. So now what I would do is I would write down the mass of the iodine that I know that we have to start with. And I am going to see if I can work out how many moles of copper iodide I could in theory make if this reaction works 100% efficiently. So for the MR of the iodine, see that is iodide, it is two times the iodine. So I make that to be 253.8, and I got that by doing two times 126.9, the MR of iodine, just I on the periodic table. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to work out the moles, and I'll do that by taking that mass and dividing it by the MR. And what I get there is 0 0.177, if I round that to three decimal places. And I can see between the iodine, the I2, and the copper iodide, I can see I have a 1 to 2 ratio. And so for that reason, I'm going to double the 0 0.177 to get the number of moles of copper iodide that I'm going to theoretically be able to make. So 2 times 0 0.177 gives me 0 0.354. And that there is my theoretical yield of copper iodide. And in this question, we are indeed told the actual yield of copper iodide, the mass. So because we've just worked out the moles though of the copper iodide, I would like us to work out the moles that we actually get of copper iodide. So to do this, we're going to want the MR of copper iodide that is going to be 63.5, and then we're going to plus the 126.9 of the iodine. And that gives us 190.4. So we can use that now to work out the moles of copper iodide. So moles is going to be equal to the mass, which we're told in the question, 60 grams of copper iodide was formed. And we're going to divide that by 190.4. And that gives us an actual yield in moles of 0 0.315. And that there is the actual amount of moles that we made of copper iodide. So now to get that percentage yield, what we need to do is take the actual yield, the 0 0.315, and divide it by the theoretical yield, which is 0 
three five four and times it by 100. And if we do that, we get 89.0% to one decimal place. So here we're told that we have six grams of ethene and it was combusted in oxygen to form four grams of carbon dioxide. So we know we started with six grams of ethene and we need to work out theoretically if all of that got converted to the carbon dioxide that the reaction says it will, then we need to work out well, how many moles of carbon dioxide would we make. So if we work out for the ethene, how many moles we made, we can do that by saying, well, the mass was six grams. The MR is going to be 28 because we've got two times the 12 of the carbon plus four times the one of the hydrogen. And we can use that to work out the number of moles of the ethene in that case. So I make that 0 0.214. Now, of course, if we write out that balanced equation, you can see that between the ethene and the carbon dioxide, we have a one to two ratio. So we've got one ethene makes two carbon dioxides. So we can use this ratio to work out how many moles we would expect theoretically to make of carbon dioxide. So that is going to be two times the 0 0.214, which gives us 0 0.428 moles of carbon dioxide. Now, if we look back at the question, you can see that actually we formed four grams of carbon dioxide. So we need to work out if we actually made four grams mass of carbon dioxide, how many moles is that? So to do that, we need to know what the MR of the CO2 actually is. So that's going to be 12 plus two times 16, which gives us 44. And when you can use that to work out the moles of carbon dioxide, that's going to be 4 over 44, which gives us 0 0.091. So now, of course, if we think back to what we know, we know the theoretical amount of moles that we could get of carbon dioxide. And we also know the actual number of moles that we have made of carbon dioxide. So we can work out the percentage yield by substituting these into that equation. We have 0 0.091 over 0 0.428 and then times by 100. And that gives me 21.3% to one decimal place. And that there is the percentage yield of that reaction. So next up, we are told that we have eight grams of magnesium reacting with oxygen to form five grams of magnesium oxide. Now, if we think of that balanced equation, we can work out the number of moles of magnesium that we reacted and use that to work out the number of moles of magnesium oxide we would expect to theoretically make. So if our mass of magnesium is eight grams, and our MR of magnesium is 24.3. In this case, we don't include the fact that there's a two in front of it because that is simply a balancing number. But we can use these to work out the number of moles of magnesium that we have here. So I make that to be 0 0.329. Now, if we take a look at our balanced equation here, you can see that we have a two to two or a one to one ratio here which means that we will expect theoretically to make 0 0.329 moles of magnesium oxide. So here for our theoretical yield, we have 0 0.329. And so because that's in moles, when we look back at the question and you see that we form five grams of MgO, we need to work out how many moles of magnesium oxide that will make and that will give us our actual yield of magnesium oxide. So, first up, let's work out the MR of MgO. 
and that will give us 24.3 plus 16, which is 40.3. So next up, to get the moles, we will do the mass over the MR. So that is going to be 5 over 40.3. And that gives me 0 0.124 moles that we will actually make of magnesium oxide. So we can put these numbers now into our formula. We get a percentage yield, which is going to equal the actual yield, 0 0.124 moles, divided by the theoretical yield of 0 0.329. We will times it by 100, and we will end up getting an answer for this percentage yield of 37.7% to one decimal place. So in this next one, we're told that we have 100 kilograms of nitrogen reacting with hydrogen to form 95 kilograms of ammonia. So here in this question, the two substances that matter the most are our nitrogen and our ammonia, and the rest doesn't really matter. So we know that we start with a mass of 100 kilograms of nitrogen. Now we need to convert that to grams to calculate the moles. And there are 1,000 grams in a kilogram. So here we have 100,000 grams of nitrogen. The MR of nitrogen, because there's two Ns, is going to be equal to 2 times 14, which is 28. And we can now work out the number of moles of nitrogen that we have by doing 100,000 divided by 28. And that gives me 3,571.43. So a very big number there, but that's because we're dealing with kilograms. So now if we have a little look at the molar ratio between the nitrogen and the ammonia, and for that we're looking at the big numbers in front of these formulas, it's going to be a one to two ratio, which means that to get the number of moles of ammonia that we theoretically make, we need to double the amount of moles of nitrogen that we had. So by timesing that through by two, I get the number of moles of ammonia to equal 7,142.86. So, that number there that we've just found out is the theoretical yield of ammonia for this reaction. Next up, we need to work out what our actual yield was. So we know that we made a mass of 95 kilograms or 95,000 grams of ammonia. And we know that the MR of ammonia is going to be 14 plus three times one which equals 17. So we can use this now to work out what the actual yield of ammonia was. So that is 95,000, the mass, divided by the MR of 17. And that gives me 5,588.24. And that is my actual yield of ammonia in moles. So putting these all into our formula now, we get a percentage yield equal to 5,588.24 over 7,142.86 and times by 100. And that gives me 78.2% to one decimal place. And so that there is my percentage yield. Okay, so now we've made it to our last question of this exercise. And this question here is talking about 98 grams of hexane being cracked to form 17 grams of ethene. And here we're asked to find the percentage yield of this reaction. So here, the two substances that matter are the hexane and the ethene, and I suppose they're testing us a bit there because they use the word ethene, so they need us to know what the formula of that is out of those two options. So writing out our formula, 
we can have a think about what we can calculate. And in this case here, we can see that we know the mass of hexane. We know that we have 98 grams of it. And we can work out what the MR of it is as well. That is going to be 6 times 12 plus 14 times 1. And that gives us 96. So now, now that we know the mass and the MR, we can work out the moles by doing 98 over 86. So that gives me 1.14 for the number of moles of hexane. Now, if we look at the hexane to the ethene, you can see that we have a one-to-one -one ratio because there's the same number of moles of each of those. The balancing numbers are the same. In that, there's not a balancing number in front of them. So that tells us that the moles of ethene is equal to 1.14 also. So theoretically, we will get 1.14 moles of ethene. Next up though, we need to work out, well, what do we actually get? So the MR of ethene is going to be equal to 12 times two plus one times four, which gives us 28. And so we can work out the moles of ethene by working out the mass, which we're told we have 17 grams that we actually make, divided by 28. And that gives me 0 0.607 moles that we actually make of ethene. So now that we have all these things, we can just put them into our percentage yield formula and we're done. So the percentage yield is equal to 0 0.607 over 1.14 times by 100, which gives me 53.2%. So I hope that makes a lot more sense now about how we work out percentage yield. You can see it's using lots of the things we've learnt about, about moles, about molar ratios, and lots more. Well, good work, keep at it, and I'll speak to you soon. Ouch! This is why in some videos I explain scratches.